Hey, hey, it's Mr. Redstone, and in this video, we're going to be talking about square roots. Just what they are, how we calculate them, how we can approximate them without a calculator, and then look at some geometric applications. So to start, let's build on what you already know. If I gave you the area of a square, what would the length of each side be? Well, if it's a square, you know that the base and the height have to be the same. So what number times itself is 64? Why 8? Similar to the one beside it, we've got a 25 for an area. That means the base and the height have to be the same, and they're both going to equal 5. So, this warm-up included the shape that this is all based on, the square. And in mathematics, we have something called the perfect squares, or square numbers. They include 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, etc. Now we call these perfect squares because if we were to represent them as a diagram, they would be the shape of a square. One, not that interesting, but four, you could see four dots being drawn in this manner. For nine, you could see that you have three groups of three. Now, those were easy to draw. I'm not going to draw 16, 25, 36, but you get the point. In the first case, we had a one by one square or one squared. In the second case, it was two by two or two squared. Three by three or three squared. And I'll just keep filling in this table. But you've seen that exponent two before. It means to take a number and multiply it by itself, and it's pronounced squaring a number, or seven, time, seven times seven is seven squared. I want you to think of this geometric application as we're working through these numbers. Now, if you can take the square of a number, you should be able to go backwards, and that's what the square root is. The square root of a number is a number that when multiplied by itself gives you that given number, and we use this symbol shown here. The square root of one is one. The square root of four is two. The square root of nine is three. The square root of 16 is four. The square root of 25 is five. The square root of 36 is six. The square root of 49 is seven, et cetera, et cetera. These are called the perfect squares because if we take the square root, we end up with a whole number. So taking the square root of a perfect square is pretty straightforward. But what happens if you try to take a square root of a number that wasn't a perfect square? For instance, 8. Well, if you used your calculator, the square root of 8 is going to be 2.82842712, etc., etc. This doesn't repeat, and it doesn't terminate. We call this an irrational number. An irrational number, like pi, it doesn't terminate, it doesn't repeat, and you can't write it as a fraction. So since it doesn't terminate or repeat, I'm going to use the approximation symbol. Now, if we didn't have a calculator, how could we estimate some square roots? I think this procedure is easily, easiest shown with a couple of examples. So the square root of 20. What we're going to do first is look for the perfect square immediately below 20 and the one above it. So we're looking at 16 and 25. Those are numbers that we can quickly take the square root of. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 25 is 5. Logically, we can conclude that the square root of 20 is somewhere in between 4 and 5. It looks like it's going to be slightly left of center. So the square root of 20 is going to be 4 and some change. To get an estimate of what that would be, we need to look at the distance in between these numbers on this number line. The distance between 16 and 25 is 9. The distance between 16 and 20 is 4. So logically, we can conclude that the square root of 20 is 4 ninths of the way between 4 and 5. So for an approximation, 
we could say that the square root of 20 is 4 and 4 ninths. Now, if we were using a calculator, it's actually 4.47, which is really close to that estimate of 4.44. The next example we're going to do is root 60. The square root of 60 is in, going to be in between the square root of 49 and the square root of 64. The square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of 49 is 7. So root 60 is going to be right of center between 7 and 8. So I'm just going to approximate it right here. And we know that our answer is going to be 7 and something. So again, just like last time, we're going to find the distance in between 49 and 64. And that distance is 15. And then we're going to find the distance between 49 and 60. That's 11. So if we wanted to approximate the square root, the square root of 60 is about 7 and 11 fifteenths, or 7.7. .7. If you used your calculator, you would have seen that the square root of 60 was 7.74. Again, pretty darn close. The last one we'll do is only more difficult because the numbers are bigger, but the square root of 130 is one you should know. It's in between 121 and 144. The square root that you can find is 11. And the square root of 144 that you can find is 12. 130 looks like it's slightly left of center. Eh, not the best placement, but it's good enough for this diagram. So our answer is going to be 11 point something. Again, we'll find the distance between our two endpoints. That's 23. And the distance between 121 and 130 is 9. So our answer is going to be 11 and 9 twenty thirds. That'd be about 11.4, which is really close to what the actual value is. So now we know what perfect squares are. We know how to estimate them if they're an irrational number. I'm going to circle back to where this lesson began when we were looking at the side length of a square if we knew the area. To make that question more complicated, all I have to do is tilt the square. Whereas before, you could have just essentially counted the base and the height to figure out the side length. When it's a tilted square, you can't do that. So you're going to be more clever in the way we find this area and the side length. The approach I'm going to use is to wrap a bigger square that's straight up and down around a red tilted square. And if you've got a square that's you know, straight up and down like this, finding the area is pretty straightforward. It's just going to be 10 by 10. So this large square has an area of 100. What I'm going to do next is find the area of one of these blue triangles. The way you find the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. It looks like it's 3 times 7 divided by 2, or 10.5. Now, if we want to find this small square's area, this red square, what we're going to have to do is take our 100, which is the large square, and then subtract away four of these triangles. The reason why I'm subtracting them away is because really they were never in the problem to begin with. I really only created them so that I could figure out what this red area is. So if I were to subtract away these four blue triangles, you see what I'm left with is this red square. Well, 100 subtract 4 times 10.5 is 58. So my area of that red square is 58 square units. And if I want to find the length of a side, I take the square root. So that side 
is root 58. You can estimate that if you want to or use a calculator. I'm going to leave it as root 58. I think it's important you see another one of these. Same idea, a tilted square. What I'm going to do is wrap another square around it. And that square is going to be 3 plus 4 or 7 by 7. So this large square has an area of 7 by 7 or 49. One of those triangles is going to have an area of 1 half 3 times 4 or 6 square units. Now since I have 4 of these triangles, I'm going to take my large square and subtract away 4 triangles. Because remember, we're trying to find the area of the red square. And from there, we can find the side length. So it's going to be 49, subtract 24 is 25. So the area is 25 square units. The side length is the square root, and this just happens to be a perfect square. The side length is 5. Before I leave this question, I just want to sprinkle a little bit of future dust on you. So I want you to look at the triangle that I'm highlighting in purple. It's a right triangle that's 3 by 4. Off the left side, I'm going to build a 3 by 3 square. Below it, I'm going to draw a 4 by 4 square. And then I'm going to find the area of each. The area of that small square is 9. The area of that other square is 16. And then I want you to see how it compares to that red square, the one that we started with. That has an area of 25. Well, guess what 9 plus 16 add up to give you? Maybe it's just a coincidence. We should look at another example just to make sure. So in this one, we had a red square with an area of 58. And I want you to look at that blue triangle on the bottom left. It had a base of 3. So I'm going to draw a 3 by 3 square that gives you an area of 9. On the left side, it is a height of 7, so I'm going to draw a 7 by 7 square, which would have an area of 49. Well, lo and behold, guess what 49 and 9 add up to give you? 58. You're going to be seeing a lot of this in high school math.